Title 42 has kept thousands of migrants seeking asylum in limbo, waiting in one of Mexico's most dangerous cities, Reynosa. Those in shelters have made camping tents their homes for months, some over a year, withstanding flooding and dangerous conditions. And while support services are provided for the migrants as they wait to plead their case to the U.S., three engineers are working to improve public health during the humanitarian crisis throughout uh, using their nonprofit. Alicia Barrera met with one of the founders of the, so the Solidary, Solidarity Engineering and has more about their community projects and their main focus. In Reynosa, just a few miles south of Texas, makeshift shelters are home to thousands of migrants. And they're living behind a 10-foot concrete wall because the neighborhoods that land was able to be secured in our very dangerous parts of Reynosa. Chloe Rastatter is one of the founders and field engineers with the nonprofit Solidarity Engineering. Their goal is to mitigate risk and improve living conditions for migrants. It will be that drainage canals, emergency evacuation plans, platforms to raise people's tents off the ground so they're not flooded every time it rains. But access to water for showers, washing, cooking and drinking is also a major focus. But how are we going to get water into these spaces and where is it going to go after? Because when you have thousands of people living there, that's a lot of gray water and black water to manage. Through donations, Solidarity Engineering has helped provide close to 400,000 liters of potable water and more than 38,000 liters of non-potable water for two of Reynosa's biggest shelters since 2020. We're also not connected to the city electricity grid because we couldn't get access to it. And now we're trying to find, uh, create a, an off-grid solar, solar grid within the camp. While the majority of their work is done in Reynosa, important tasks like planning and fundraising is done here in the U.S., which means they have to be strategic about how often and when they cross the border. Of course, it takes hours. It's not a casual you walk there, you walk back. You're going to be in line for hours. And then we spend those other two days, you know, making the maps, reaching out to funders. And with the need for engineers only increasing due to the humanitarian crisis, Rassetter and her team say they have have no immediate plans to retreat their efforts on the border. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.